Hello everyone and welcome back to campaign mode here in Parkitect. So let's just see where we got to at the last one because I've not played in this for quite a while. So we completed Western Roundup. Obviously this is my second run through but my first off for one on YouTube just to recap. So we're going for the optional goals in each uh, scenario which so far we have managed to achieve and the next campaign level that we're going to play is Coral Caldera. I sort of remember quite enjoying this one before because you can do quite a nice tropical theme with it. Not sure quite how challenging this is but the goals here we need an overall park rating of at least 70% uh, to sell 800 park tickets and then the optional goals to sell at least 400 park tickets which we should be able to do and to complete it by the end of December year two so we are a bit limited for time and um, so I think the strategy I might go for this time is to sort of get all the rides and coasters in place and try and meet the goals and then theme it up afterwards and just so that we don't fail those optional goals okay so let's get into it so here we are in Coral Caldera, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> um, this introduction here is it's a wealthy entrepreneur has purchased this idyllic caldera in the middle of the ocean and wishes to turn it into a bustling attraction. Park entrance needs to remain free. So we're just making money from the rides in this one, but to be honest, that's what I normally do anyway, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Obviously we've already looked at the goals. I don't think they're too challenging, it's just the time restraints that might cause a problem. So we're probably best off going into pause mode straight away. We've got a good wad of cash to start with, so I'm sure we can build some good stuff. Here we've got quite a large space of flat empty land, so that should be nice and easy to build on. A nice selection of calm rides. A couple of thrill rides, the Enterprise is normally good for um, bringing in the thrill seekers. But we're a bit limited for coasters, we haven't got anything really thrilling there, so I think straight away we will need to research our coasters. We've got a monorail, which I can't really see us using, and a log flume and some paddle boats, which might be nice to put in round in this lake over here. So yeah, I think the first thing to do would be to research sorry, our coasters and get some foundations for the park down. So let's get into the time lapse. Okay, so the first thing we start working on is a building to house some of the shops and stalls for the food outlets. Um, this is mainly so that I could get an idea of the style of theming that we wanted to go for for this one. Um, although I mentioned before it's a tropical sort of theme to this map it's not necessarily that tropical it's just the fact that it's on an island so I wanted something that sort of gives off tropical vibes but not being overly yeah, you know sort of like tiki themed because I think that's something that we'll do in a future campaign and um, we have quite a few tropical ones coming up so in the end what I sort of went for was this sort of mismatch of different roof colours and styles while trying to get some sort of vaguely tropical colours in there and using different wall styles as well so we use some of the brick walls and then just some of the plain walls and at the moment it just looks like a bit of a mismatch but by the time it comes together I'm actually quite pleased with the way it looks and it's probably something that I'll carry on um, as a style for the rest of this campaign. So I did spend probably a lot more time than I should have on this uh, building set but to be honest it didn't cost me too much money um, and that's the main thing really I have the game on pause so we're not losing out any time for getting guests just want to sort of lay the foundations of the park before we start running it in play mode so yeah I really think um, this style works quite well for this sort of almost like a little main street I guess but just on one side and um, I get carried away like I always do and add more and more detailing to it and it actually takes me probably a couple of hours just to just to make this set which is 
probably way longer than you should spend making uh, some theming for a campaign <laughs> in this game, especially a campaign that was sort of made several years ago that I've already done before. But, you know, I wanted to complete the campaigns nicely and make everything look sort of realistic and authentic. I should probably uh, point out, even though really it goes without saying, that all these campaigns we're doing in uh, vanilla for these builds. So, um, obviously that includes no construction anarchy, uh, no Freedom 2K mods, no mods at all. So we're just using the in-game pieces, but I have allowed myself to use the DLC ones, which we probably wouldn't have originally had for uh, for these campaigns when they first come out. But yeah, I just like to have, you know, use all the in-game pieces that I can. So for the back of the building, I keep it very simple. It's just going to be a sort of backstage area. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail with all the sort of backstage stuff when we're playing through these. You know, I'm not going for ultra realism and um, just as long as it's sort of believable enough and the staff can access it from a gameplay point of view we've obviously got a depot inside the building to to um, provide the shops with all the stock that they need the um, that confused the hell out of me the first time that I played this game I really didn't understand how how you're actually meant to supply all the food to the shops and all the sort of backstage stuff that you need to build it just didn't make any sense to me and I didn't understand why they'd put it into a game either but then obviously the more you play it the more you sort of understand how much of a cool feature that really is so yeah that's pretty much this building um, come together we're just adding a few more details of a bit of foliage well some some plants and um, some benches and things like that that obviously the guests are going to need and I also wanted to put some sort of wall climbers on using the uh, bushes but not go overboard with it just sort of where I felt that it would look nice and it just gives the buildings that sort of more sort of worn down feel I guess sort of a bit more rustic and then we use some of these uh, trees that come with the Booms and Blooms pack. I think they're really nice trees. I think they're all modelled on the foliage essentials anyway. Um, but yeah, these flowers as well are my new favourite flowers to use as a vanilla piece. Um, I think they work really well. There, I'm using them in another build that I'm doing at the moment as well. You can just sort of place them anywhere. You know, you're not limited to, uh, to to the grid or anything like that. And you can make it look a lot more varied as well. They're recolourable, which is always handy. So now I felt that it was time to start getting some rides into this park. Because after all, that's what the idea of the game is. So we start off with the teacups. Um, you might have seen me before sort of struggling to find room for a merry-go-round. Um, or a carousel, if you prefer to the left of the facades but in the end I decided against that um, I think this is a sort of park that you would definitely see a carousel in well let's be honest most parks have a carousel but um, yeah we'll find another space that will, where that will fit a bit nicely later on in the build perhaps so now we're focusing on the sort of end of the main street if you like um, and at this point I wanted to try and make it look a bit less gridded so I'm just using a little technique here of putting borders in and planters all round um, so it gives us a sort of roundabout for the main square if you like um, guests might clip into the bushes a little bit but that's just something that's a compromise I'm willing to make um, because you know I really want to try and make it look a bit less vanilla with the style of paths and stuff because obviously with mods you can make all sorts of rounded paths and stuff but you can't do that in the vanilla game so we move on to our first coaster which is going to be a junior coaster and um, this is my third attempt at a layout for this one I think I cut the other two out because it just makes the time lapse way too long um, so we just keep in the one that I actually stuck with 
and I've found it surprisingly difficult to make a sort of believable and pleasing to the eye layout for, for this one. Um, so I do end up sort of digging into the hillside quite a bit, which I sort of prefer not to do normally. One, because it's too expensive, and two, because it's something that theme parks don't realistically do that often, um, especially a more low budget park like this. But I just needed to because I didn't have the space in the end. So we do some sort of tunneling as well. Um, you can see that I put two sections in w w with the switch back track. Um, so there's a little bit where the, the coaster will actually go backwards. And yeah, really, other than that, it's just some some basic helixes um, and some some mild drops really a lot of curved track I think the layout looks pretty good in the end I'm fairly happy with it um, it will suffice for the junior coaster and um, it actually takes up a fair bit more room than I, want, than I wanted it to um, just because we needed sort of room for the brake run and stuff like that and obviously these switchback sections are quite big at this point I quickly decided we need to get some more rides in for a gameplay element to try and actually start working towards the goals of the level rather than just trying to make everything look nice so I put in the wave swinger and the enterprise ride as well so we've got something in there for the thrill seekers as well because obviously this coaster isn't going to appeal to the most thrill seeking of guests um, we haven't got anything researched like that yet because even though I told the game to, to uh, research coasters it decided to research thrill rides instead which was rather annoying um, so here we're working on the station building for the coaster and the theme that I sort of decided we're going for is um, a turtle theme <laughs> if that makes any sense it's good. the coaster's going to be called Turtle Bay um, tours or something like that and it just goes around this lake and there's some of those uh, foliage turtles in there um, it's just something that I thought of very quickly just to give it a basic theme but I think the station looks really nice with these uh, basic shapes that I've used just the cube shapes and coloured different shades of turquoise and blue works really nice on this sort of beigey background wall and again trying to come um, sort of copy some of the colors over from the other section uh, from from the other parts of the park so we've got some sort of continuous theme going on especially as this is near the entrance and again trying to keep it somewhat tropical as well um, I feel like these roofs are quite tropical that we use in the station and all in all, yeah, I think this is um, quite a nice build and it complements the coaster quite well. Didn't really know what to do with the track colour, so I just went for a really standard sort of dark grey, purpley, bluey colour, which works fine for <laughs> for what we need. Um, trouble is with the junior coaster, because the track's so thin, you're sort of limited on the colours that you can go for. Because sometimes if you go for something too light, um, you can't really see it that well so we do skip forward a bit here to keep the time lapse um, not too long and you can see that I just use the text to add a nice sign in there um, and then blueprint it across it's on both sides obviously the entrance and exit but because the um, because the entrance path goes all the way round I sort of felt the need to put the sign on both sides um, and then we go all planet zoo on you and add a load of foliage to the roof which I think is a really nice touch and it's not something I've seen that often in Parkitect before but I think it works really well for this style of build uh, something that I'm definitely going to try more in the future because I like how that turned out here then we're just adding in a catwalk for the, for the uh, lift hill for the coaster um, I'm not very good at catwalks and stuff, especially in vanilla, but I think I've come up with something that looks reasonably good. I had a support structure to it as well, 
because um, I just felt like the, the the catwalk didn't look supported properly with the in-game supports for the coaster but um, in general we're not going to be doing custom supports for this coaster or for any coaster really in campaign mode because it's just uh, too much time same goes for transfer track I probably won't be adding them in um, that much really in campaign because um, again it's it's a lot of extra work and I don't really see the point seeing as they're not used from a gameplay perspective so that's the ghost to pretty much built and we will now go into the live portion so I think we're doing all right so far in working towards the goals for this campaign so the overall objective is to sell 800 park tickets and really all we need to do is complete that by the end of December year 2 because by doing this one we're going to automatically do this one so yeah we've got two, 249 at the moment and when we get to 400 we unlock the steel coaster let's just see Right, so we've unlocked the wooden coaster. Okay, that wasn't really what I was hoping for. Um, but I guess we could do a wooden coaster in this one. Um, I guess that could fit quite nicely into this park. The layout that I've gone for isn't really ideal because you're sort of stuck here and so I've got some more pathways that go round here. But then we could put maybe a big woody going sort of out and back going round near the lake here at the back um, the steel coast would have been ideal but I don't think we're going to reach to, uh, 400 guests before we you know before we can uh, before we put in another major coaster so I think we're going to have to maybe work with the woody It's difficult isn't it because I'm looking at the loans here and obviously that's a high repayment for a loan but would a coaster bring in more than that because of 10,000 or can we build a coaster with 12,000 I'm not sure right <laughs> we'll go back to that um, Happiness rating seems to be quite high. Experiences and prices seem to be fine. Um, I'm usually pretty happy just sort of guessing the prices. I don't try and do it exactly, but they're happy enough paying six pounds for this, um, six dollar rather. It's got a very high excitement, um, but obviously a low intensity. So we really need to get some more high intensity rides in because this is all we've got at the moment. Um, staff wise I think we're doing alright because all the shops seem to be covered I can't see any litter anywhere got security There's no vandals that I can see in the park yeah one mechanic should be enough for now um, might add in a couple of extra litter bins actually trash bins because um, see piling up cheated a bit there by just deleting one trouble is I haven't themed quite a lot of this area yet because I just wanted to get the rides in so it's difficult to know where everything's gonna go but we just sort of do something like this put a few bins in um, yeah keep the litter down keep the park nice and clean and tidy because that's quite a big thing when it comes to the rating Hunger and thirst is sort of not too bad, I guess. Um, I think we've got enough food and drink stalls in the park for the moment. I don't know whether we crank up the research a bit and see what coaster we come up with next. How do we do? Right, no, I think I'm going to crack straight on and build a wooden coaster. Um, try and get up to that 400, and then maybe we'll look at doing the steel coaster. We'll see if we've got another one researched by then. Um, it might be worth our while getting another thrill ride in as well. Let's just try and really smash through and 
start getting these guests in because it's, it's not 800 guests we've got to reach it's just we need 800 tickets yeah really just need a big coaster so we're going to get back into the time lapse and that's what we're going to do next so here we're going to start building on the wooden coaster as i mentioned um, and we're just going for an out and back layout going over the lake at the back here I just feel like sort of one of these classic out and back woodies would probably be something you'd see in a park like this so I've, I felt that fitted into this campaign quite well and usually with a very simple layout like this it's gonna have quite a good throughput as well um, so that we can really try and maximize the amount of profit we make from it because we need to start earning some serious cash in this level and we want to try and get some guests since that's the main reason for building the coaster um, I mean there's, there's not really a lot to say about the layout it's very simple it's just um, a couple of drops and then a very slightly banked helix and turn around section to bring it back round into a couple more drops uh, double down and a couple of more helixes and into the brake run there so yeah it's really quick and simple to put this one together and uh, really this is just more from a gameplay perspective uh, the, the layout here is not the most beautiful looking coaster I've ever built but it will be very useful hopefully and like I say it's probably quite realistic for this sort of uh, family type park I guess as, as it evolves into a slightly bigger park they start getting some some bigger coasters like this in a very classic sort of wooden coaster layout and then I don't really like the colors that the wooden coaster comes with by default so we just change it to a darker brown um, like the sort of color that you get on the, the wooden coasters in classic RCT games so now really we're just trying to meet the goals and uh, get some more rides in so I put the Enterprise in or I already had the Enterprise in but I move it over here um, because we're going to have to look at the sort of layout of the park and where we can put another coaster later on in the playthrough. Um, I also put the top spin in so we've got two good thrill rides there to draw more guests into the park and start selling those tickets. Um, so at this point I decide to work a little bit more on the scenery for the park and work on some planting and some bushes and foliage and all that type of thing. Um, like I've mentioned previously, we're probably going to be looking at completing the goals in these scenarios before going too heavy on the female. I mean, I say that, but I did that whole sort of front facade as the first thing. I think that's okay to sort of get a basic groundwork in the park. Um, but once it gets to the point where we're putting the rides in, like you see, I haven't added any theming to any of the flat rides there yet not that they're really going to be themed up but you know I haven't sort of added any fencing or anything like that to give them more of a decoration rating yet although we do go in and build the coaster station for the wooden coaster so with this one I kept it very simple um, just some different sort of shades of wood different textures of wood and um, tried to vary it with a couple of levels but really it's just a rectangle box station which is something I'm guilty of doing far too much in this game because it just works out so much easier and especially with a campaign playthrough so there you can see I've added some different shades to the roof uh, which is something that always makes the build look a bit more interesting and then we're getting in some wooden panels with a darker wood texture and this is something that I think is probably quite believable for the station of a wooden coaster very very simple and just something really to get a cover over it and hide that horrible orange station something else that you'll probably notice that I do quite a lot with my coasters in uh, in vanilla is I cover them up with with shapes obviously if you're using mods you can there is a mod um, for station covers 
for your coaster stations but you don't have that in vanilla so I just get the basic shapes as close to the station platform as possible and just cover it up there to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, it's always difficult when you've got these sort of paths going underneath the station which is something that I've ended up doing quite a lot in this in this campaign um, because it's difficult to build a sort of base for the station I guess but really with space and everything like that it was sort of the only way that I could think to do it so yeah that works out fine and yeah that's pretty much the completed um, design for the station you'll probably um, notice as well that I don't tend to worry too much about the other sort of realism aspects like custom supports or anything like that because I think that would just I mean I don't like doing them anyway you probably know that I don't like doing them but you know it would just take far too long to do that for every every campaign coaster that I build so here we're just putting in some hedges to make everything look a bit nicer and some like foliage yeah here you can see that I'm adding in the station platforms with the basic shapes and I do think this is a really nice thing to do um, just to hide that horrible orange that it comes with it's a pity that there isn't an option just to change that color because really then I would just change it to a darker brown or or whatever it saved me doing this but yeah it works out fine doing it like this as well just do it, putting in the steps there as well and then I felt we needed some extra wooden panelling on the station as well here we're going for um, a basic queue line just with some fences along the front not really an awful lot to say about that it's not the most exciting build I've ever done but like I say it's it, I think it's fine just to, just to cover up the coaster station there So the next thing that I work on is a sort of group of facades at the back for the second row of food stalls and shops and that's something that I end up going back to twice. You can see this is what I put in to start with and I just wasn't happy with how it looked at all um, even once I started adding detailing. So I took it out and started again and went for something a lot more simple with more boxy buildings um, using brick textures and yeah they are a bit boring but I think they look and fit a lot better into into this area of the park we use inspiration from the buildings at the front of the park as well but try and vary them a bit just so that they're not exactly the same um, there's nothing worse than sort of playing through one of these campaigns and making all your buildings the same which is exactly what I did the first time I played through them all when I was still learning the game um, but I don't think that's something that you'd see in a real park even the sort of basic family parks try to have slightly different uh, varieties of buildings and you know basic themed areas and stuff uh, a good example of that would actually be Poulton's Park which is my nearest but it's not even really that near I can't really call it a hometown park but it's um, you know about an hour and a half away from me and it's you know a family run park they've just got a Mac spinning coaster um, put in there with a really good new themed area um, but before that they just sort of had the basic um, theming so there was a sort of dinosaurs dinosaur themed area like Jurassic themed area um, can't even think what, what the other areas were obviously they've got the Peppa Pig world there and stuff like that but yeah they, these little parks do try and bury the theming just just a bit just to make things look more interesting and make it feel more like a theme park less like an amusement park I guess um, yeah th these sort of parks probably are sort of somewhere in between the two you know they're not quite well then nowhere near Disney level of course but you know they're not just rides plonked down um, with very basic queue lines but but that is something that I might consider doing for a future campaign if it if it works out right 
I'm thinking there's one that's a sort of beach type level, um, a sort of beach type map rather, that would probably have like a classic amusement park like the Pleasure Beach at it. So that's something that we could consider for for the future. Um, and then going back to this building, then it's pretty much complete now, but there's not an awful lot to say about it. Again, it's just using similar colours and architecture to the front buildings, but varying it a little bit and adding in these uh, pavilions with some purple planting that would obviously all be fake but it's it works out quite nice so I really like these little cypress trees as well and um, I think that's what they're called anyway they're from the the, the booms and blooms pack they, they fit in really well just there between the building to to hide off the sort of backstagey bit we don't really go that heavy on the backstage areas for these campaigns either um, just as long as there's a staff room in there and you know the the, um, the little depots and stuff so that the the staff the haulers can actually carry their crates not around the main paths um, and speaking of staff rooms that's exactly what we put in here because I realized we didn't have one yet and the staff were all wandering around tired, not doing any work. So it's probably something I should have put in a bit earlier. Uh, but yeah, we've got it in now. And we're just sticking to very basic, similar architecture for these buildings as well. Nothing too fancy there. And sticking to similar colours as well. But with a tiny bit of variation. Because uh, you want to sort of make everything look cohesive or coherent. Um, but you don't want everything looking exactly the same. So yeah, it's it was sort of difficult to decide. I brightened up the colours there a bit and put some windows in and some awnings to make it look a bit nicer. And um, I do quite like the path texture we're using in here as well. So we're getting a little bit off topic there. Um, this sort of cobbled, not cobbled is it, it's um, I don't know what you call that type of path but it's it works quite nice with the wooden path as well and add, adding the variation in there and as you can see I sort of carried on there with some of the fencing and at this point I decided we really need to start getting guests in the park so I thought it was time for our third and final coaster um, and I, I decided to go for the B&M invert in the end but this layout was an absolute nightmare to build because really I didn't have enough room to realistically make this coaster um, so we try several different ideas for layouts I even googled in B&M invert layouts um, and I was thinking maybe we could do something a bit like Nemesis Inferno at Fort Park where it's a really sort of compact layout but because of the limitations of the coaster building engine for the inverted coaster it just wouldn't let me do that you, you can make these really small loops but you need plenty of clearance for going sort of over and under other elements um, I think slightly too much but that's just how the game makes you do it so yeah, it is what it is and it's it probably took me about 10 restarts here before I found a way of making a layout that I was happy with uh, basically I just wasn't giving myself enough room so I end up sticking the coaster station right next to the path just so we've got enough room for a big enough lift hill and the other thing is that it has enough speed to make it through the inversions um, there's is quite a lot of layouts I was trying where it was just getting stuck on that first loop and then giving yourself room as well to sort of come out of them inversions into different elements and I did have to do quite a lot of terrain modification as well to do this because it ends up being sort of a terrain conforming coaster um, which always works well for an invert obviously like Nemesis but yeah, it's not something that I want to do all the time with these with these campaigns. 
you know, I want to try and work with what they've given us, but for the sake of this one, there really wasn't any other way that I could find to do it. So that's sort of just what we end up with. And yeah, we've got packed quite a lot of inversions into this final layout. Um, obviously, we've got the vertical loop going into that cobra roll there, and then we try and get in a just a, a, a zero G roll here. But that ends up not working, so we just do a sort of, I don't know what you'd call that really, I don't think it's a real element, but it goes into some sort of corkscrew. And um, having said that, I can't remember if this is, yeah, I think this is the final sort of layout idea that I go for. Go back underneath the Cobra roll there, obviously giving myself enough room for the clearance and whatnot. And then we have to go underground for the final helix. And we managed to get a corkscrew in there as well before coming back into the brake run and rebuilding the station for about 50th time. So yeah, it really, really did prove quite a challenge fitting this coaster in. I was thinking several times about putting a steel coaster in, but I just didn't know if it would be intense enough or uh, exciting enough to draw the amount of guests that we need to sell those park tickets. So. Yeah, in the end, I just made the inverted coaster work. And because of that, we have to build the uh, the queue line and the exit underground. Well, just the queue line, sorry, underground. Which, again, isn't ideal. But we make that work with the station, uh, which you'll see in a bit. So now I'm just sort of focusing on the gameplay or well I say that I did most of that off camera just to make sure that we were working towards them goals and would meet them I've run a couple of ad campaigns as well to try and draw more guests into the park which is always something you have to do the happiness ratings fine now um, now that we've got all the staffing sorted and everything like that and that there's some intense rides in there as well so that's fine so we start working on the station for the invert and yeah this took this took quite a lot of time because i wasn't really sure how to do it uh, with the location of the station itself and the limited room that i had to work with i even had to adjust the layout of the coaster so that it wasn't clipping through the station which is something that i'd never normally want to do but given the limited amount of space that we had here it sort of felt like the only way to do it so you can see there I've covered up the station platform this time with some wooden roof pieces or floor pieces and yeah I mean the guests feet might clip through them a tiny bit but it's not really noticeable it's just sort of a, a few dots above the above the actual level of the platform itself so it's not really noticeable plus it'll all be covered up so I think that looks fine in the end um, we're using the same technique here that we used with the station for the junior coaster which is using basic shapes to to build some nice trims I think this is a really cool thing to do I've seen quite a lot of other people do this in the game as well on YouTube um, I think it yeah it, it looks really cool it's nicer than just using borders um, I think the top one there is a border or a cornice or cornice whatever it's called um, but the other the other pieces are all basic shapes and using the f two different shades of blue there with the nice sort of uh, cream color for the base of it works out quite well as well. So here I wanted to try and carry on a bit with that almost eco-tourism theme that I went for with the coaster of the junior station because I feel like that sort of sits, sits on its own and there's nothing else that's themed similar to it if that makes sense. Um, so trying to make everything sort of blend in nicely with the park I thought yeah we'll go for this sort of wooden structure um, but then somewhere I want loads of foliage on it as well loads of greenery to to add that effect like we have with the the foliage on the roof of the junior coaster station I wanted to get something like that in here there you can just see where I moved the coaster track and obviously I've got it paused in the right position. I had to take it out, um, open and put it in test mode to, to do that, which isn't ideal for gameplay, but we've got it paused anyway, so it's fine. 
and then here I'm using a different type of pavilion we're going for um, standard ones this color obviously doesn't blend in that well with the rest of the station but once I add the foliage to it um, it looks a lot nicer and then yeah sorry I must have cut quite a bit of that footage out or not had it recording at the time unfortunately but yeah I decided that we need to cover up that middle section because there's that ugly queue path going underground again so yeah it's all I could really do here it ends up looking a bit like the front of a house which isn't ideal for a coaster station but it's it's the only way I could really do it to make things look right and I needed some windows in there because otherwise it's a bit plain we went for the Candyland windows but because there's planting foliage above it it covers up the it, it covers up the sort of candy dots on top so that's that works out fine and then I just went for a little canopy over another window um, for the bottom window there and that's it really that's the station built um, now I'm just frantically trying to meet the goals um, like you can see I keep flicking back to the goals to make sure we're meeting them and we've now sold the 800 tickets and like you can see there we have completed the scenario just like that um, we've got the 800 guests in and you have to hold it for a month so I was thinking oh we need to do it by the end of November year 2 which fortunately we just about did so that worked out fine in the end now it's just a case of finishing off the part making everything look nice adding in loads of foliage um, lots of rounds of the wooden coaster so it doesn't look so sort of derelict on its own because it is a bit sort of out of the way but again I think that would probably be quite realistic for a park like this I'm also focusing on things like making sure that there is the fencing to prevent guests from climbing into the coaster area um, where we've got coaster track and all sorts of things like that and then just stuff around the paths and all the flat rides that we've got here that looks rather barren at the moment and just trying to make everything look a lot more pleasant um, on an, a, a different topic I really actually like that colour for the top spin I couldn't think um, how to have it at first I thought I might just stick to a similar green like it was before but I think that yellow um, works really nicely and just brightening that area up a bit I'm quite happy with, with that colour selection there um, and I didn't want this plain sort of corrugated fencing or whatever it is to look or wire fencing rather to look too boring so I added a load of ivy to the front of it to add a bit of interest there and here we're adding some planters in between the path sections to break up all the boring path work as well and yeah it's really just finalizing a few details uh, once the scenario is complete I will probably go back in and pay the loans off just for my own sake it's I know it seems a bit daft but I always do that and then reduce the cost of the coasters a bit just to make it more like a realistic park I guess and just so that I've completed it all in my head <laughs> and uh, yeah it doesn't really matter for gameplay once you've completed them goals you could just leave the park but I do like to finish it nicely so um, yeah and another thing I always struggle with is thinking of different ways to cover the flat rides and queues and stuff because I can end up just making things look all very samey so we're using lots of different types of fence lots of different walls and lots of different planting just to add variation to all the builds that we put in there for all the flat rides so all in all um, yeah it comes together really nicely I didn't mention as well that I snuck a wipeout in there as well I think I must have missed that in the, in the footage when it was done um, and I, I think that was just before we met the goals actually just to ensure that that we're meeting them because it slowed down a bit even with the advertising so yeah we got there in the end and finally I am just adding in some rock work and loads and loads of foliage which I well planting which I sort of cover over the bottom of the invert because again the area there looked a little bit barren so wanted to get make it look like it's sort of going off into a foresty area and then coming back into the main park at the end 
and yeah it looks a lot better once all this foliage is put in so that's it for our time lapse then the park is pretty much complete and i will catch you over in the final live section So here we are in the completed Coral Caldera map and I'm really happy with how this one turned out in the end. It's probably my favourite that I've built uh, in this playthrough. Obviously we have our three main attractions, the Junior Coaster, the Inverted Coaster and the Wooden Coaster. Um, we're managing to rinse £12 a go for guests for the Wooden Coaster and 13 for the Inverted Coaster. I probably could have charged a bit more for that. But we didn't need to to meet the goals of this scenario because you know, this one does have a high intensity as well as the extreme excitement but yeah last time we we're turning a profit it was about two thousand pound a month i believe so let's get in and have a take a ride on some of the coasters so junior coaster which is just leaving the station now I'm, this is probably my favourite coaster in the park, um, even though oh, the operations on it aren't great, it's stopping at the top of the hill. This is something I always try and prevent from happening, but whatever, it's, it's fine, there's three trains running on it, so it basically just goes into a series of helixes. goes through some underground tunnel helixes as well just because of the landscape around that's the only way we could really do it as I mentioned before um, and then down into these nice helixes over the small lake that we've got here before we come into the turnaround section or the switch track rather which is such a cool feature, I loved it when they introduced this I think that's with the, the second DLC that we had actually when these were brought into the game so yeah, it shouldn't be sitting on the Switch track that long I don't think or maybe it should, but I think that's because of the operations that we've got running at the moment which aren't great like I said before, but it's fine <laughs> and then just into a final backwards helix before we complete the ride, which is just two more turns, as you can see here, into the brake run. So yeah, for a junior coaster, I think that is actually quite a star attraction, um, and it always seems to attract a decent number of guests. Um, speaking of guests, actually, we ended up with 554 guests in the park, which isn't um, an incredibly high amount. This isn't the biggest park ever, but obviously because the, the goal was just to get the 800 guests. Uh, or rather sell 800 tickets um, it didn't matter too much that we didn't um, have that many guests in the park at the end um, so let's go and take a ride on the wooden coaster then unfortunately I haven't bothered going around and naming these coasters um, and I probably won't do that usually I know I did for the first one but I probably won't normally do that in campaign mode because I'm just not that good at naming things anyway to be honest so I don't really see the point but yeah this is a very standard layout out and back woody the only thing I'm not so keen on about the vanilla sort of wooden co the coaster builder for a wooden coaster in vanilla is that you can't have any steeper drops I don't feel like the drops are steep enough to look realistic for the wooden coaster um, which is something that you can do with Coaster Anarchy so it's fine normally but yeah I think this coaster looks uh, fairly good very basic station for this just lots of wooden panelling basically I really couldn't think what to do for that station so that's what we what we ended up with and then finally into the inverted coaster which has just broken down so that's terrific let me pause the game and come back when that's there we go that's actually fixed really quickly our staff are working efficiently <laughs> which is good um, so yeah like I said before I struggled with the layout a lot for this one but the final layout we get here it works out quite well um, please don't stop at the top of the lift away that's good for the two 
bigger coasters at least we do have uh, decent operations running on them. Um, so it's a standard um, start to the layout then with a curved drop into the, the uh, vertical loop into a back wing or whatever that's called. It's not a back wing is it? Something like that. Um, into a corkscrew into a zero G type roll. Uh, Cobra roll, that's what that one's called. Yeah, and then a final corkscrew into a helix underground and into the brake run at the end of the coaster. And that pretty much concludes our visit to Coral Caldera. Um, a slightly more challenging campaign, I guess, um, but a very enjoyable one to build. And although it turned out a bit of a mismatch of styles that I ended up with, I am very happy with the overall look of the park. I think it looks really cool and not something I particularly tried in the game before. So we will just save the game one more time and we will go back to the map. So there we go, it gives us the lighthouse sort of building. Um, again, we've already done this before of course, but it's nice to just leave the map and see the two gold coins uh, go to that to show that we've completed it. And it's really weird how it works when you've already sort of done the playthrough. Because um, it, it, these blocks just completely disappear as if you've not played it before, which is something not noticed uh, previously, but yeah, that uh, brings us on to the next campaign, which is Mystic Oasis. Um, or we could play Nova Labs. So I'll see how I feel when we go into the next one. And I will see you all there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.